Welcome, Anthony. Hi. Welcome back to the studio. Yeah, hi, Barry. Nice um, to see you. You've got a case study where something really unique uh, occurred, and um, there was a little bit of science involved. And I think this is something that would be really uh, important and exciting for our um, industry, our followers, to understand a little bit more about. And it involves good old uh, cleaning liquids and floors. Yeah, thanks, uh, Barry. Yeah, look, we get many uh, case studies over a year. And um, they, most of them are pretty straightforward to address. Yeah. But this is a particularly interesting one, and we spend some time on it because we, we got an unusual result. I've taken a few pictures for you to look at because this is an engineered wood floor. And what's happened on the floor is that it's got two types of discoloration. Yes. So the first discoloration is at the ends. Where it's actually pulled into the, 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 yes. the, the, the end grain. And we seem to get a capillary action occurring on the joins where it's getting sucked in. And getting darker. And yep. getting, well, we'll get to the part about getting darker. And then we also have a surface discoloration. Okay. Now, if you look more closely at the floor, you'll pick up that the discoloration is blackening. Okay. It's, it's almost turning it into charcoal. Why is it doing that? That's what we wanted to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the interesting part about this particular problem was that there was a complex in a street of where there were new buildings put up and there were eight uh, new houses. And of the eight new houses, two were bad and six were fine. Very strange. Very interesting. Yeah. So we decided to do a little bit of um, investigation. <laughs> Inspector <laughs> Clouseau! <Sleuthing. laughs> Inspector Clouseau! No, it's not sleuthing. It's only for our internal use. We don't publicize who, names of what, yep. where it is. We're doing it so that we can, uh, we can learn. And also we can do it, we do it so that we can maybe pick up uh, a little bit of a trend in the market that we need to warn clients against. And also try maybe, if we can, to rectify it in our own products. So what we found, we found that um, there were two cleaners working. They were ladies working on the, um, one was working on the six, and there was another lady working on inter alia those two. Um, we, deter we discovered that the lady was using a standard dishwashing liquid. And at this point, I want to emphasize that it is nobody's brand. Some brands are excellent. Yep. But there are those brands which have got certain chemicals in them. And uh, we discovered that it was really in that that the problem lay. And it's very hard to identify which one's which, so it's best to it's just stay away. impossible to tell. <laughs> stay away from dishwashing liquid, keep that for the dishes, and use like the proper cleaning floors. Really, keep dish dishwashing liquid only for dishes. Yeah. Do not use it to clean your car. Yeah. Do not use it to clean your floor tiles. Do not use it to clean your expensive engineered wood. It just is very risky. You know, I've done it myself where I've cleaned floors with uh, dishwashing liquid because I ran out and like, you know, you got guests coming around or you got to step up. But I, I never realized it could be so risky. You know, um, there's, there's more to it, obviously, than just yeah. that. What we actually did with this floor, we unfortunately, we had to tear up quite a lot of it. And then we uh, cut it, cross-sectioned it, and we actually extracted the, some of the ingredients out of it, and we took it to a laboratory that uh, specializes in microbial um, research. And they discovered that the, the, there was an excess of phenol in the, uh, in, the, in the wood. Now wood, it's cellulosic, it's got lignans. But when you react phenols with lignans, you get a blackening, you get a a very, uh, it almost becomes a charcoal rotting look. 
like a mold. Like it's not really a mold as because that's as, spores, but like it's, like it's uh, not really a mold. De decomposing. It's, well, kind of. yes, I, I, it's a complex of uh, phenols. There's actually a, a, a research paper written on this. Okay, but. So what we discovered was that when we when we used certain dishwashing, we tried a couple of dishwashing liquids, and obviously we tried them at higher concentrations. Yes. Um, the results weren't exactly clear cut, but we did uh, soon discover that if you left water or the liquid on for enough time, you would then get a discoloration occurring on the surface, and obviously this here we we only postulated that it might have been caused by a mop. Uh, any uh, laminate or uh, engineered. engineered wood flooring or yes. LVT or any of these uh, layers or, or manufacturers will prescribe a certain mop to use. It's a flat plank type of a mop. The dust, the dust broom, the, the microfiber. The, that's the one. Yeah. They don't recommend that you go to the corner store and buy a uh, cheap mop. A string mop. A yeah. string mop, because that mop is a pickup mop, and then you slop the liquid all over the place. You try and get it off with that mop, but it doesn't get off. So you've got a layer of water on it. Whereas the, the, the prescribed mop has got like almost like a broom effect. Yes. That you can that you can clear it. So my my point to you is only this. Um, this was a particularly bad case. I think what came out of this, two things. Please do not use anything except the recommended cleaning product. And secondly, don't put too much. I think and then wipe it off. <laughs> you know, I think um, everybody asks, everybody who's buying a new floor asks the question, how do I clean the floor? What's the process going to be involved after it's installed and after it's lost that new, brand new kind of look and feel. Um, it is about correct education on the right cleaning materials, the right cleaning solutions. Um, here we've got a floor which must be a few hundred thousand rand. And uh, the horrible expense. <laughs> and the inconvenience mm -hmm. of, first of all, going through the identification of whose fault is it, and then the remedial. Um, it's huge. It's yeah, huge we, we, d we did not. Uh, say whose fault it was, we don't know. It's a no-fault scenario. One of the things we tried to find a way to resolve the problem, yep. we did find that a light sanding cleared away most of the, discolor the surface discoloration. Mm. The problem came only on the joints. On the end grain. But with yep. the light sanding, it was in fact quite respectable. It became reasonable. It started to age looking quite reasonable. But it was obviously a lot of work to repair this job. Mm. So, and the best is to let's rather prevent the, the, the problem from occurring in the first place and um, share the right information. So thank you so much for watching. I found this little case study very interesting because, you know, being a self-dedicated flooring nerd, I hadn't encountered this particular result myself as yet, but I do know that it's very commonplace for cleaners to use dishwashing liquid when they are in a bind. Anthony, thank you so much for joining us here in the studio again. We look forward to more case studies yeah, where you can uh, help guide us in the right practices of how to look after our floors and install our floors. So if you have any questions or uh, comments for either myself or for Anthony, uh, please hit us in the comments below, hit the bell button, and don't forget to subscribe to Flooring Africa. Absolutely. <laughs> That's what we want. Uh, thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you in our next video.